so yeah, for those of you that are out of the country and don't know, um, February in the United States is uh, nationally uh, designated and recognized as Black History Month, where um, uh, where the month is dedicated to celebrating um, the history and contributions of African Americans uh, here in the United States. Um, some now, you know, unfortunately, Black History Month comes with some controversy. Um, some people, you know, some people um, either don't like it or think that there should be a um, month for everybody. Um, you know, personally, I think Black History is every month because of all the contributions in history that black people in America have contributed to. And one month really doesn't do it all justice, let alone the shortest month of the year. I mean, really? <laughs> so, um, so, you know, it's always on the beginning of black history month that I encourage everybody to, you know, look up, uh, so look up African-American contributors, um, black people who have contributed. There's a lot out there. There's a lot to look up. There's so many people that contributed, not just Martin Luther King. Okay. I know a lot of people think of this month and think about Martin Luther King, even though Martin Luther King day was, you know, last month and dedicated to him strictly. Um, you know, but, you know, if you do look up Dr. King, really look him up. Don't just rely on what we had in history class. Because history class, at least when I was growing up, um, we got an abridged version of that man's life and his mission. And we got a very... Um, uh, we got a version of his history that, you know that seems to glamorize his cause without really delivering a message. And, you know, it's, I mean, it's kind of weird how that happens, but, you know, uh, Dr. King wasn't just, you know, sanitized, washed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do, you know, Dr. King's life and history and mission didn't just boil down to walking the streets with large crowds, giving the, I had a dream speech being tragically murdered and then Lyndon B. Johnson signed the civil rights act and everybody lived happily ever after. No, that's not, you know, that's not the, that's not the complete story. And some of it is embellished. So really look him up, really look up, you know, how this man grew up and came to lead the civil rights movement. Um, Read on how his peaceful protests were actually met during that time. People among his crowds were also sprayed with fire hoses and, you know, had dogs on them sent by police. Okay. Read on how this man was viewed during that time okay some of you may not know this but at the time of his death mlk was the most hated man in the country and most of those people that took that survey you know they were in fact white um look up how his views on riots changed during his time in the civil rights movement. No, he didn't condone it ever, but some of his views on writing did change. This is the stuff that we don't learn about. This is the stuff that we don't hear about, you know? So if you're going to study MLK on this month, really study him, really look him up. Um, you know, and if you're going to go with civil rights leaders, study Malcolm X also and really study him, you know, 
um, find out what the Black Panther movement was really about, okay? And, you know, if you're going to go outside the civil rights realm, you know, check out black contributions in just about everything in this country from science. You know, some of you may not know this, but three black women helped make space travel possible. They helped, yeah, they were integral to NASA's mission back in the 60s. They even made a movie about it. So, you know, look that up. Um, look up all the musical contributions, the endless amount of musical contributions that black people have had, not just in America, but worldwide. I mean, the whole concept of syncopation, you know, was an African invention. So, you know, look that up, the contributions to everything from, you know, blues, you know, rock and roll country, you know. I mean, there, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot there. Um, and even technology, you know, in fact, every single year on this channel, every single year, um, for black history month, we pay homage to a man who really set the trajectory for home consoles and home video games. Um, to a very consumer friendly level uh his technology the concepts behind his technology are still used to this day um to this day what almost like what 50 some odd years later the man was a pioneer a very curious young man who spent some of his free time as a child in his neighborhood going to people's homes to fix their television sets. I know in this modern day and age, it's weird to have someone to have like a uh, TV repair because it's all LCD screens that basically have to be replaced anyway, if they ever break. But you know, the old televisions, the old CRT televisions needed repairing. And you know, this man at a young age, uh, went to people's houses to fix their televisions. Um, you know, he was always curious, always, you know, taking things apart uh, to see what things were like. Um, George Washington Carver was one of his influences, was one of his heroes um, that set, you know, the course for him to become an inventor, an engineer. Um, he went to two colleges, Queens College and City College. Uh You know, got himself a, a job at a, a company. It's no longer around, but Fairchild Semiconductor. And his invention came about with their video game division while he was director of engineering and marketing. His invention allowed people to play more than just one or two games on a console. Back then, you had to buy separate consoles for separate games, you know. Take, for instance, Pong. The home version of Pong was just the Pong console with Pong on it. And that was it. If you wanted to play a different game, you had to disconnect it from the back of the television, get the other one out, plug it in, you know, hook that one up to the back of the television. You know, it was a pain, especially back then when some of the television sets were actually large pieces of furniture. There were televisions built into, you know, cabinets with their own tabletops that people would put decorations on and stuff like you know these things were big and heavy and you know trying to change anything out the back of those was a project <laughs> you know um so yeah this is the man who invented the video game cartridge and his invention and the concepts behind it would go on to contribute to um, consoles such as just about every Atari system from the 2600 to the 78, you know, 7800, on and on, okay? Um, every, just about every Nintendo console, okay? Um, Sega's early consoles, um, up until the Dreamcast, I believe, 
Well, the Saturn also, but still, cartridge technology was used in the Saturn also. Um, you know, all the major players in the gaming industry use this man's invention, and the man I'm talking about is um, Gerald Anderson Lawson. Jerry Lawson. In fact, I want to um, see if I can't bring up a browser page with all of his information on it. Let me see. Let me see. Here we go. Okay. All right. So as you can see here, now there are uh, several websites that you can go to to look him up. Uh, he's actually gotten uh, a little bit more notoriety, a little bit more, you know, He's gotten a little bit more coverage about his creations. In fact, so much so that to my pleasant surprise and the surprise of many others, back in December of 2022, Google did a doodle for his 80 sec for what would have been his 82nd birthday. And it's a brilliant one too. How cool is that, right? <laughs> I saw this and I knew exactly who this was. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So this man is, you know, this man is wonderful. He's a, a brilliant guy who without his invention, who knows where, you know, the video game industry would have ended up, you know, and who knows, you know, how it would have affected everything else in the gaming industry. Um, without his invention, there is a possibility that, you know, gaming on CDs may not have been discovered. Um, so it may have affected, you know, consoles like, you know, the PlayStation or the Sega Saturn or Sega Dreamcast or, you know, you know, even, even like CD-ROM games. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. We have, uh, in the gaming world, we have a lot to be thankful for to this man. All right. He actually improved, uh, you know, Richard Beer's home console um, invention and made it to where, you know, people can easily and accessibly play all their favorite games. Something that's done to this day. And I encourage you to look him up. He does have a Wikipedia page. And from what I can tell, a lot of the information on the Wikipedia page is accurate. And the citations are very, you know, the citations are very good. So, you know, I don't normally offer Wikipedia as a point of reference because, you know, anybody can go in and edit and change those articles. But, you know, every year I check it from time to time. And he's got, you know, he's got an article on biography.com where it tells like a condensed version of his history, his contribution. Um, something I didn't know before this year when I was, you know, looking up his information again to prepare for this is he actually did meet at a club when he moved and started working in uh, Silicon Valley. Um, he actually did meet... Um, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak of Apple, you know, during the time that they were starting up. <laughs> and um, one of these articles said that in an, interview, in an interview, he didn't find them all that impressive at the time. <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious. Uh, but um, I have a feeling that knowing about Steve Jobs' history and personality, it probably had more to do with Steve Jobs. You know, I understand the man was not a very pleasant person to work with. <laughs> but yeah, um, because of them we can. They have an article on him, starting with the Google Doodle. I think the Google Doodle brought a lot of attention to, to this man. And it's attention well deserved. I mean, this person is not a household name by any means. But if you're a gamer, he should be. And there's even an article in, in NPR about him from September 2021. This is it right here. Um, 
those are his son and daughter, uh, Anderson and Karen. And they talk about, you know, growing up with him and like, there's an old family photo that they included Jerry right here, his wife, the kids, awesome stuff. And they talk about, you know, growing up with him. They talk about the, um, the, uh, lab, the makeshift lab. He had in his garage with several big computers networked together. Um, you know, I mean, this cat was all in. He was a, he was a techie and a nerd through and through. Um, And, you know, I am, I'm personally 100% thankful for his contribution to gaming. Um, definitely worth talking about, especially on Black History Month, you know. So, Jerry, I'm still not 100% certain on an afterlife or in another life, but if you can hear me, thank you very much, my friend, for all that you've done for gaming and you know wherever you happen to be at now i hope that you're continuing your legacy or fulfilling another dream fulfilling another need that in the future will still be appreciated for decades to come <laughs>